Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. In today's episode, let's unravel the secret of building a winning portfolio. Whether you are an aspiring investor, a freelancer with irregular income sources or a professional, this video is your essential guide to crafting portfolios that stand out. And to do that, we have Dhirendra Kumar with us. Welcome, Dhirendra. Thank you. So why don't we begin our discussion with the description of a well-constructed portfolio and how does it look like? One is that uh, don't wait for my prescription and don't think of you know building a great portfolio as an excuse to postpone your investment. Get started with something anyway. However bad or good, it doesn't matter. Because you know, till you start investing, there is no, uh, there is no possibility of succeeding with it. And even if you fail with a mutual fund, you will end up succeeding because what happens is, you know, if you don't invest, you know, your learning begins the moment you start investing. You see the ups and downs, acclimatizing yourself with that. So starting now or whenever you can at earliest when you have savings is the most important thing. Then comes how to build a winning portfolio. Building a winning portfolio is a fairly straightforward thing. And if you get distracted by too many ideas around it, you will not be able to build one. In fact, getting too much focused on building a winning portfolio is a recipe of disaster for disaster in the sense that uh, investing in a mutual fund or investing in markets or investing in anything which is linked to the market, you have to diversify. And you have to diversify simply because you don't know enough about anything. And that, and you just don't know which sector will do well. You don't know which company will do well. You don't know which fund will do well. You don't know which style will do well. You don't know which ma- which pa- geography will do well. Do well. So because you don't know any of these, and even if you know it, it is very hard to guess it right all the time. Because you will go, you you if you are right about it once in a while, you will be wrong about it once in a while. So that is why you must diversify. Then the state of the market, it is cheap or expensive, you don't know. That is why you should stagger your investment. So do your SIP, invest in a diversified vehicle. And any investor doing this, even if he has not been able to pick a great fund or a great a bunch of great bunch of fund, he will still succeed. So what advice do you have for beginners who are just starting to build their portfolios? What steps should they take to get started? As I was saying earlier, that's get started anyway. Uh, but uh, methodically think, methodically thinking about it, I think any new investor should start with a diversified vehicle. Start with a diversified vehicle like a aggressive hybrid fund. It will have a little bit of fixed income. It will have substantially into equity. The equity component will be diversified. And uh, initially, the biggest fear is that you start in the market tanks and you are scared for life and you run away not to come back again. That is something which you will be uh, insured against or you know you'll be insulated to. So start with aggressive hybrid fund. If you are used to the market somehow you know you have tried it and you know you're wanting to be methodical about it from here on maybe start with a flexi cap fund. So these are the two vehicles. Third one is that you know if you will invest start and it will also help you save taxes maybe start with a tax saving fund. So these are the three vehicles conservatively with aggressive hybrid fund maybe little used to start with a flexi cap fund or if you it will save you tax a tax saver so people with different income sources like a professional with a regular income or a freelancer whose income is a little irregular how should they approach it should they approach it differently or is there a way to go about it oh they should be a little more methodical about it and they should definitely approach it differently because you know they can't do sip only with a predictable stream that you get your salary credited to your account on first of every month you can plan your sip in this case sometimes you will get more sometimes you will not get it so what i suggest anybody who has you know intermittent or less periodic or less reliable stream of income but you end up earning anyway i think the suggestion will be that you know create 2 3 months of emergency fund put that in a short term debt fund which means that you will keep drawing your salary you you will not be deprived of your income need uh, from that money and whatever you get do your budgeting and invest that money uh, it is like a sip except that it is not very structured it is not happening on you know it is systematic in the sense which is dependent on whenever you are able to save whenever you are able to earn so create your buffer 
and then start in, do start doing your buff, you know investing whenever that buffer is coming to an end fill it up before you start investing so you created your emergency uh, not emergency i would say you know consumption fund for next 3 months mm -hmm. and uh, two months have has passed and you haven't earned anything and in the third month you get money again replenish that three months re requirement and rest of the money you invest so do your sip be regular about investing i think that is one of the biggest most important thing for anybody to be financially independent and successful next comes you know what kind of vehicles same vehicle diversify with for your long term money so how should investors determine their investment goals risk tolerance how should they approach that uh broadly you know many a times when you are you know when you start earning and then you start saving don't think about goals start investing anyway whatever is the surplus put it to work uh goals are primarily you know whatever be the goal whether it be child's education buying a home buying a bike your retirement they can broadly be classified into you know three categories the money which you want to be handy short term and it that money can remain invested like that or may might lie around for many years but that is your emergency fund or the consumption fund mm -hmm. i was referring to second is the money which you need in a near term you know 3 to 5 years 7 years you know the time frame that okay i my child will get into school and that is the time when i might need 50000 rupees that is the money which in couple of years that that is another one and the one which you don't need in the foreseeable future 5 10 15 20 years your retirement money the mo the money that you want to use for down payment 10 years down the line for buying a house those kind of things so long term things think of equity medium term think of debt and you know short term put it in cash whether it be lying in a bank account or a fixed deposit or a short term debt fund and uh, this should be the broadly the guiding principle because you and if you go wrong on this step you will be in for nasty surprises if you put your long term money into short term uh, you know into uh, debt or you know fixed income the problem is that uh, you will get predictable return you will get guaranteed return but it will not be enough it will not grow well enough if you put your long short term money into equity you will be again in for a very big disappointing time because you need the money six months down the line and the market will tank and it definitely happens when you are getting very greedy and what about the alternative assets like real estate cryptocurrencies as a part of their portfolio how should investors approach that thoughtful investors intelligent investors should look at it not as an investment think of buying a house think of buying a jewelry for your wife or you know for yourself and uh, crypto give it a pass it is a speculative vehicle and if at all you are getting attracted to crypto tempted to buy in crypto because it goes up dramatically create some kind of fun allocation say 50000 rupee is my fun allocation it becomes zero i'll be okay if it becomes 50000 becomes 2 lakh rupees i'll take the money out and go on a holiday or have some fun so have your fun allocation for the speculative vehicle if at all you have to one is that you can do without getting into any of these speculative things and uh, home should be looked upon as a shelter that you are buying and buy it only if it will save you rent buy it only if you are going to live in it if it is going to be a speculative vehicle better give it a pass because it's a very big ticket purchase and most people uh, emotionally get attracted to having house which they not they don't need and for investors who are planning their retirement what should be the time horizon for their uh, portfolio construction no you need to work for your retirement all your life uh, you start earning and that is the time when you should start investing and the money which will be left because assuming that you retire at 60 or you retire at 65 or you you work till 75 depending on the kind of work uh, uh, that you are doing uh, you have to reconfigure your portfolio little bit depending on how much is your income requirement and what is your accumulation and uh, when you retire you have to see that if your accumulation is enough to generate you know so that it will generate 6% return or 5% return and it will be more than enough for your monthly requirement you are home you are okay if it is less than that then you have to really worry about it because you need a larger corpus and have a margin of safety because at a stage when you uh, will stop working you need to have the margin of safety and that is where i feel that you know not having a 
withdrawal rate of more than 5% uh, will can only comfort you for retirement. Now comes, you know, how that retirement corpus should be invested as compared to when you're accumulating. When you're accumulating, it can all be substantially into equity. It should be dominantly into equity. It should be 75%, 60% or, you know, 80% into equity. Once you retire, then you need to get little conservative. But that little conservative does not mean all, all fixed income. Take out your three years requirement, three year annual requirement of for income into fixed income so that one part is taken care of. And the rest of the money, maybe, you know, depending on the scale, you can be more conservative or more aggressive uh, by putting it 50%, 60%, 75% into equity. So one is to actually have that three year consumption fund. And then comes uh, an asset allocation, which is not all equity. So now portfolio construction is such with such minute details. What are the red flags or mistakes you should look out for? The one is that, you know, all said and done, as I was saying that choose a diversified vehicle, choose a vehicle which is which will be consistent because uh, but most investors get attracted to investment only which has done very well in the recent past. What has done in the last one year, what has done exceedingly well in the last six months. That is the reason why people invest in crypto. Uh, so I think, you know, one should just work on an asset allocation, choose diversified vehicle, make sure that the, your diversification is good enough and you diversify a little better, more effectively as your corpus gets larger. When you are starting, you can start with the one fund. And that to an aggressive hybrid fund, which will get you exposure to all kinds of asset classes. As you, as it gets bigger, you need to diversify it over two funds so that if a one fund manager goes out of favor or it stops doing well, the other one is, you know, is acting as a counterbalance or, you know, is doing well. Then as it becomes substantial towards your retirement, then it should be spread over three, four funds so that all of them don't go wrong at the same time. Okay, so the last question is, how often should investors review and rebalance their portfolio? What factors should prompt adjustments to the portfolio? Review should be primarily driven by the fact that, you know, you have chosen a vehicle and you have chosen a vehicle because it was consistently doing well and it has stopped doing well. You need to find the reason. You can't jump from one fund to another because it has tax implication. The moment you take your one, one investment, which has been invested for 5, 10, 15 years, all your accumulation, all your appreciation will become taxable. And 10% of that money you will lose. You have to pay by way of taxes to as capital gains. So you need to be careful and you need to understand the reason that, okay, is it going? Because many a times people sell a fund simply because the fund has, is not doing well. But the fund may not be doing well because the market is not doing well. The fund is doing better than the market, but the, you, you are disappointed, you are upset. So a fund will, a, a fund which generates superior return, an equity fund is not going to give you return year after year like a fixed deposit. Only fixed deposit does, but then it gives less return. So be prepared for inconsistency. Be prepared for finding the reason for before you sell. And if you find that the reason is good enough, okay, this fund has lost its momentum. It is doing worse than its peers. It is doing worse than its peer year after year. That's good enough reason to sell. So you should sell and you should do this review every year so that it is a little more tax efficient. You are not getting, you are not getting anxious about your investment month after month, day after day, because the, the market is in a state which will cause anxiety every day. Hope we answered all your questions regarding creating a winning portfolio. Now we have a viewer's question. Vipin asks, I am a 36 year old. I just have bought a house for rupees 1.3 CR and out of which 81 lakh rupees is the loan at the rate of 8.4% interest for 20 years. I didn't use my investments at all as down payments as market is giving me much more higher returns than the loan interest. I still have 30 lakh rupees invested money. I want to retire early around 48, 50 years. My current expenses, including home loan EMIs, are one lakh forty-five thousand. What should be my fire number, and how can I achieve that? Given his framework, you know, he has bought his house, paying his loan, and his monthly expenses one lakh forty-five thousand rupees, uh, and he wants to retire in about fifteen years' time. Uh, for that, he will tentatively require about three crore rupee, and there is a margin of safety built into it because during this period. In this next 15 years, he will also be substantially would have repaid the loan, and he, you know his uh, his current ex expense of one lakh forty five thousand rupee, which also includes the EMI, the payment, the repayment, 
that will be the buffer he will have. So taking 1,45,000 rupees, he needs, you know, one, uh, he will need require about 3 crore rupees. Now adjusting it for inflation, maybe, you know, he, he can, he can create another a crore and a half uh, buffer into it. Then comes uh, how much money will be, uh, contribution will uh, help him achieve that goal over the next 15 to 18 years. That is given that, you know, he has 30 lakh rupees worth of savings already and that will be invested in equity, where, which, which looks like it is because it's yielding very handsome return. Uh, he needs to invest something like 40,000 rupees a month uh, over the next 15 years for it to accumulate up to 3 crore. Maybe because, you know, you need to, depending on what your post-retirement uh, needs are, plans are, uh, you need to tweak it. I'm giving a very ballpark estimation of 3 crore needed to leave a li lead a life of dignity and that, that can be achieved with about 40,000 rupees a month. But if you have some sophisticated need which will be which will be require even more money or some foreign travel or some exploration, that's a different story. You, you need to adjust for that. Okay, that's all we have for you in today's episode. Keep watching this space for more information. If you like the show, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care. Bye for now.